What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyd, and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the right side of the map, in the red color, playing as Ra. His name is Spamped. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Loki. His name is Marty. The map looks like it's Oasis because it is Oasis. And uh, this is the round of 60. Oh, is it the round of 64 or the round of 32? The round of... Th Hold on. Chat, let me know. Is this the round of 62 or the round of 32? I think it's the round of 62, ladies and gentlemen. Best of three... Uh, and we've got a Loki versus Ra matchup here. Very, very excited about this one. Loki versus Ra, definitely a difficult matchup for the Loki player. He's going to have to work this one out. You can't just play standard Loki shenanigans against Ra. You have to defend your weaknesses. The Rock is going to come cause some problems for you. The Axemen are going to be built, cause more problems for you. And all of the stuff is going to be very, very difficult in the end. So we'll have to wait and see how it's all going to go. Relics have been uncovered as well as Giraffe have been. The Thundercloud Shawl here, a very, very important relic here for, uh, for Loki, actually. This one's really, really helpful in this matchup. Extra 5% uh, or a reduction of 5% of the Pierce vulnerability, as it were, meaning that your Herser are going to be uh, able to tank a little bit more against the Chariot Archers, which ends up being a big deal, as well as your Raiding Cavalry tanking a little bit more against the Chariot Archers, which which really does matter, because basically the Ra player here is going to want to make Chariot Archer Axemen, uh, and you're going to be wanting to to make Hersa Raiding Cavalry. Uh, so that really does help. Anyways... Enough about that. Uh, what else is happening here? This is a really, really bizarre build order here from Spam. He's he's seen the giraffe over here. And if you see two zebra, two giraffe as Ra, your best bet is actually to not move out onto these giraffe at all. Stay in your base. Go for a later advance time because you know that your opponent can't put that much pressure onto you, onto you early and get, uh, get a delayed uh, classical age around about... 4.45 or 5 minutes in, and then grab your second town center and go for your farms, generally speaking, is the best play. Because once you come over here and you eat this giraffe, and you eat this giraffe, it ends up being a total of 1,000 food, but you have to walk all the way over here, so it can be just that little bit more challenging to actually get just get to the classical age. Uh, so we'll see how Spamped is going to be able to deal with all of this as his temple is coming up over here with his priest, moving the uh, villages over onto the granary over there, chopping the wood down on that location. We also see Marty grabbing his own giraffe on this stage, on, on this on this point over here. And Marty's not going to have really any problems here getting to the next age. The problem that he will have is that he needs to decide how he's going to approach this game. Uh, and honestly, far second town center, as he's going up through Heimdall here, but a far second town center here is the only thing that makes sense to me on uh, in this map with this current... Uh, with this current goat situation, with the with the current food on the map, a far second town center is the only thing that really makes sense here for Marty. And not just a far second town center, but I would say a far second town center with a with a heroic age behind it. Why? Why is this what what I'm suggesting here? Well, the reason is that if you stay, if you go, if you go to town center here first and foremost and stay in the classical age, you're gonna be stuck in the classical age for a very very long time you don't have the goats or the food to like get to the heroic age without building farms and you don't have uh you just don't have the food really in the classical age but if you go to the heroic age what you can do is you can stack gold and you can buy food for a little bit while you get that farm transition coming in and then you can jump straight to irrigation and, and live the dream where that's concerned meanwhile we see dark coming through for spammed very, very late here for Spammed. He's advancing late, which is what we said was going to happen with that uh, with that hunt over in the corner there. Very, very big problem for him. He has to walk all the way back with his villagers. So the resources gained from moving over onto this hunt and then running all the way back, 
there's just it's just not there. There's just too much walking time. The extra hunt gather rate, it doesn't end up paying for itself. And Spamped is, uh, is going to be struggling just a little bit. Whereas, if you take a look at what Marty's doing, he's able to move over onto these baboons. He can also move over onto this tree afterwards. So there's not really that much of a problem where that's concerned. As we do see Marty here, he's going for that second town center. The uh, the Heimdall has come through, but, Sp but Spamped isn't worried about any sort of big push here from Marty. He is just playing it slowly. He's staying one town center here, which, oh, he's not in the second age. Actually, I tell a lie. Maybe we'll see a barracks get dropped straight away. Okay, so we are seeing the barracks getting dropped straight away. So so Marty's Heimdall here has paid for itself already in Fear Factor. Uh, thank you for the six months, Constantis. Constantis? I don't know. Uh, appreciate you, my friend. Uh, so, yeah, this is one of the big, big benefits of going Heimdall is that your opponent, especially against Ra, because Ra's scouting is so bad, he's got no idea what, what you're doing. So he has to kind of respect that the units can literally just walk into his base, uh, undermine the tower, and then he's going to be uh, very, very good. Uh, as we see the armory now coming down and spent, just staying one town center here, which is uh, basically exactly what Marty wants to have happen here. Because one town center Ra against this kind of two town center, If is he going for a fast heroic? It kind of looks like it in a way, but there's just no resources here just yet. But a fast heroic here from, as we said, armory, fast heroic here from Marty means that he can actually go straight in to Yarls and potentially go in with ring giver Yarls here, which are going to be really, really tough for, for Spamped to actually beat because... If you go one town center fast heroic, you're going to be basically relegated to making cavalry chariot archers, but and I mean like mostly chariot archers because you just don't have the food because you've built only like 11 or 12 farms. So this is really, really good for, for Marty starting off here. The question is just going to be, is he going to be able to make these this uh, this resources work? I would have preferred to see him actually building dwarves here rather than gatherers out of the main town center uh, and just put them over onto the herdables here and potentially also take some villages off of wood because he doesn't need that extra wood at this point uh, and just chuck those over onto the herdables to get him that faster heroic age. But it it shouldn't matter all too much as he finishes up with the villagers over on this location. Going to be dragging them back over here. Could possibly drop some farms down right away or just drop onto the wood nonetheless. Potentially also just bring some goats over onto this town center here and have them uh, have them eat. That is also an option. As we see a longhouse now coming down. Hathor, the god of choice here for Spamped as well. As uh, Marty... Motoring ahead in this game. Hathor on the way. Houses coming up all over the place as well. As the Skraling going to be scouting up to the top side of the map. Walls coming down here. And we'll see how things are going to eventuate. As Spamped also getting himself that, that hand axe upgrade. Really, really important. But generally speaking, well, not generally speaking. One way that you can play Ra going for the fast heroic here is after rain is done. You can you, There is no real reason to stay on these farms with just plow. After rain is done, you can just take a whole bunch of these villages off and chuck them over onto wood, and you just get a lot more resources to play with, a lot more uh, ease of building siege towers, ease of building the chariot arches. Yes, you can't really afford the cavalry, but you can put the villages straight onto the goats here that are that are fattening up to get yourself a little bit more of a boost in the early heroic age, which is really, really important. Meanwhile, we see Marty now advancing to the heroic age. He's getting himself watchtowers, really, really smart to grab that technology to kind of deal with the rock. But he's also going up through Bragi, which I think is, it's not necessarily a bad play, but it's a surprising play here. With Heimdall and Njord as your option here, you can do a lot of damage without really a lot of resources. Whereas Bragi, you need to spend all the resources, get the army out, and it might be just a little bit challenging here for Marty to make anything really work with that uh, with that flaming weapons, at least at the start of the game here. As we do see the villagers now over on this berry bush over here. Walls coming up on this position here as well. As Spamp flies through, there is this watchtower here. That's going to be a big, big deterrent for Spamp's rock at this point. 
as he does come through. He sees that one moving back up to the top side here. Going to be able to actually find some villages over here as Marty is being a little bit too greedy. The Rock's line of sight, not quite big enough here, but he does spot the uh, the scrailing over here, and then he spots the villagers. That's going to be a difficulty here for Marty to deal with. He's going to lose quite a few units as the scrailing going to be retreating away. Locust gets dropped down. Going to be able to pick off one villager here very easily, plus the other villagers retreating away. Will he get it, though? Is the big question. Yes, he does. Two villagers. No, only one villager there with Locust. This is absolutely everything here for Marty. He's going to be really, really happy about this position. He's chucking up the hill fort on this gold mine over here. It's on the edge of the map as well, so this hill fort covers basically the entire angle here. The, the place I would have liked to see the hill fort is actually here though, because uh, this hill fort, there is actually a little bit of an entrance here for the rock to drop just in here. The town center covers this area already, so you don't need to worry about that. So, while Marty has got a really, really nice... Uh, Nice base here, nice defenses here. Still going to be a, a, a difficult one for him as he does get safeguard coming through as well. Going to start being able to build some of those towers. Dropping a market here as well for Marty to be able to start buying himself some food, which I really, really like. Meanwhile, the unit's going to be moving into the main base. Safeguard just about to pop here for Marty. Uh, and that's going to be able to keep these towers alive for quite some time here. As look at they go up to 11.55. As the unit's moving in onto this position, the town center is already here. We've got the battle, but we've got a handful of units. We've got the iron yard. We've got the, uh, the hill fort. It looks like Marty's going to be able to hold here as we do see a second town center coming up. The unit's going to be retreating away. The battle ball going to be keeping the units in here for just some time here. A cheeky wall would be huge here for Marty as he's going for that building block. He gets a slight building block here, blocks the units in, getting a huge amount of damage onto Spamp's army here. As Spamp does manage to take down one of those long, the, will take down the Longhouse Foundation and get out of there without losing more than one unit. But a nice attempt from Marty to keep him in there as the town center is now up for Spamp and. Spamped Spamp is looking to, well, he needs to spend some more resources, but he's looking to jump straight to the Mythic Gauge, or after he gets this third town center, he's got the market up in the corner as well, just needs a little bit more gold. Economic upgrades here for Spamp. He's currently missing Shaft Mine. Shaft Mine is really, really important uh, for Egyptian in, uh, in Age Mythology, because it gives you like a 20% bonus in... Uh, effective bonus in gold gather rate. Right? So grabbing that one super early is uh, is very, very valuable. Meanwhile, large gold mine over here. This is an interesting choice from Marty. He's, he's not mining this all out, but one thing he does need to do is actually throw another hill fort down on this position uh, to, to kind of get his production going just a little bit better he's only got three military buildings at this point which really isn't that much spammed with now the three town centers here also marty needs to think about potentially coming up onto this town center and getting it for himself maybe a wall over here and doing everything that he can to kind of secure this town center make sure that spammed can't take it away from him uh I mean, alternatively just going for a big 130 population flaming weapons push to try and take this town center down and take this one for himself isn't a bad idea either at this point as copper shields coming through uh we do see that marty is spending his resources nicely here he is starting to throw the farms down around his town center and we will be seeing spam having to retreat back underneath this town center here is at 88 of 145 population osiris is on the way heavy yarls or heavy cavalry is already in for marty here at this point which means that these yarls are very very strong as the town center is going to be getting torn down here it wouldn't be a bad idea to drop undermine here to just make this a little bit quicker Alternatively, Undermine for this Migdol on the back here wouldn't be a bad idea. Utilizing Undermine to hit this tower over here and hit the Migdol is also a possibility as the town center getting torn down. Lots of resources here. Irrigation coming through for Marty. I really, really like this opening here from Marty. I like the response from Spamped as well, though. Rushing Mythic Age for Osiris. Osiris is going to be a really, really difficult, or Son of Osiris is going to be a really, really difficult unit to deal with here for Marty, uh, especially without Frost, which is something that uh, Odin and Thor would have access to at this point uh, if they went for a similar strategy like this. Uh, but generally speaking, the best way for Loki to deal with the Son of Osiris is actually to just set up and get yourself portable, uh, not portable ramps, get yourself ballister. If you can get yourself ballister out, 
this army here is going to be, and the Son of Osiris, it's going to be really, really useless. Ballister and wa walls around this position would be gigantic here. And Marty just needs to get to the Mythic Age here to make that work. He's going for fortified town centers instead of advancing. He does have his market up. He is buying uh, food, it would seem. You can see that food is starting to skyrocket a little bit. Makes a lot of sense. As the, uh, as the army pushing forward, there's the Son of Osiris coming out, spammed, ready to start pushing in. And Marty needs to be careful here. He could get baited into thinking some sort of uh, so some sort of a flaming weapons here is going to be a good idea. Because there's a wall back here that's very easily to just run, run back through. And we will be seeing that Marty is just going to be pulling all the way back for the time being. Deciding to turn around on this army straight away. The Son of Osiris is a unit here that is now very much out of position. We'll see if Marty is going to be able to send his Yarls through to take this Son of Osiris down. He will be chasing that one down here as best as he can. There's that Flaming Weapons and this is a bait here from Spamp and he has definitely done it nicely. There's also the Rock here to pick up that Son of Osiris with no units to be shooting upwards here. The Rock can simply just fly away here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, not exactly the play that Marty wanted undermined there onto the wooden walls as there's a Migdal stronghold sitting under here and now the army of Mar Marty is just going to be running in to the meat grinder. He does get the undermine to hit the Migdal stronghold on the back but this is just not going to be doing all too much damage at all. We do see a Valkyrie spawn here for Marty as Bronze Mail coming through as well. The unit's still pushing through nicely but Son of Osiris is just absolutely decimating this army. The mummy gets uh, the, 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 the one hit kill there on the battle board of the iron yards everything gets pushed back and spammed has easily held here as marty has to retreat back he is using this moment here to get himself the settlement up but we see spammed in the top corner setting up his market he can now grab this town center back for himself at 64 villages for spam to 69 villages for marty as marty has thrown any sort of advantage he might have been able to get with that flaming weapons away, ladies and gentlemen. And now he's got a really, really difficult time ahead of him, which is how is he going to deal with the Son of Osiris? He's going to get pushed back. He's got gold up the top corner over here. He's got lots of gold mines here. Uh, and one way that is... One way that is very easy for a Loki player to lose in these situations against Egyptian is not getting the trade route started in time because you just see all the gold mines and, and they're going to be mined out so absurdly fast here as the hill fort going to get denied and Spamp is going to continue to be able to push forward here as this hill fort gets cleaned up. Spamped, uh, Spamped can continue to move forward. And the other thing to remember here is Spamped has got shifting sands here if spamped wants to he can get himself out of siege works get some siege towers out get some catapult out and just shifting sands in to, to this town center while putting pressure over here distracting the army kill this town center off and uh and, and get a really really strong position moving forward uh, meanwhile, we get that flood control and fortified town centers coming through for Spamped. Gets his town center up, moves forward onto this gold mine to secure another gold mine on the map. And what really at this point can uh, Marty do here? He needs to basically just distract, defend, get these hill forts up. And he's going to be in a really, really good, well, well, not a good position, but at least a defensible position here. I was like, for some reason, I can't see what this is. If I move over to Marty's perspective, can I see what this is? I mean, it is a hill fort, but uh, apparently this building doesn't exist. Apparently. Don't ask me why, but it doesn't It doesn't exist. Neither does that, but that, neither does that building. What is happening here? Oh, there we go. Maybe I hit I hit some weird buttons. All right, let's just not let's just pretend. As the army now pushing through, the upgrades here for Marty are looking really really strong. He's got full bronze here. Spamped on the other hand does have full copper, so it's not as big of an advantage as one might expect here. But the army is still pushing through. Nonetheless, the army of Spamped, he does not have the counter units for these cavalry. And even with the Son of Osiris, he is going to have to retreat. But he gets a decent trade there. Nonetheless, a lot of those units do fall for Spamped. Marty gets a good trade. But Spamped, he just picks up, retreats back, and he's going to be completely fine here moving forward. Meanwhile, villagers on this uh, location over here with the... Uh, Skin of the Rhino just tanking for days, getting these walls set up over here. It's kind of funny to see, but he gets the walls set up. The 
the uh, the villagers will get taken out. I think there is still an opening over here. So one thing that Marty can do is just wall this off himself uh, on the other side, and that can be another way to kind of uh, to kind of work it out. And Marty gonna be pulling back here yet again. He still needs to just get to the Mythic Age. It is so vitally important here in the kind of uh, in the kind of boom war as it is on a on a map like Oasis with Loki against Ra or or Norse against Ra to get to the Mythic Age with a good timing, because you're just gonna you just run into the meat grinder. This this son of Osiris just kills everything. We will be seeing the Mythic Age coming through, and it is gonna be hell. No surprises there. Hell makes a lot of sense. Marty is at 93 villagers right now. This is a classic maneuver from Norse players and it is what you have to do from the starting point once you once you go uh base I'll try and articulate this but it's kind of hard to explain Norse's economy is technically the best in the game uh due to the gather rates the gatherers uh they have they gen well Thor and Odin have got the better hunting gather rate they also get the uh farming gather rate so with uh with with Skadi Loki doesn't get that, so it's not relevant here. But they do get the be the best gold gather rate in the dwarves. So Norse does get the most resources, but Norse also loses the most units in the game due to their units being slightly weaker than all the other civilizations. So you need to get above the 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 economy of your opponent to be able to afford all of the technologies that you need to keep yourself relevant in the game and then after you have all the technologies then your economy just keeps on booming out of control you just get floating resources so then you have to cut your economy down from like a hundred village account roughly a hundred village account down to roughly 60 village account to uh to allow you to continue fighting whereas your opponent is going to need more economy to, to support their units you can kind of find an advantage where that's concerned as the Marty units trying to push through here, trying to get some damage done onto that son of Osiris. The rock flying in from afar here to try and pick up that son of Osiris and get these units back to safety. One heavy raiding cavalry getting some decent damage done onto the son of Osiris does get picked up. There's the mythic age for Marty as he will be cl uh, clicking the Nidhogg down onto the top side of the map to try and allow this side build to come up. The villagers will be retreating away as the, uh, as the few... Raiding cavalry still pushing through. One Yarl does manage to snipe down the uh, the mummy. There is champion cavalry coming through. Iron weapons coming through as well. As Marty has to retreat back, he's getting some walls set up to break down this trade route over here. We do see the dwarves finishing up over here for Marty. Things will start getting very very spicy here for Marty if he doesn't start the trade route soon. Uh, and I think that a market set up over here, grabbing these last two gold mines and starting that trade route is going to be a way forward. But iron weapons coming through. Marty only really needs to get iron weapons, iron mail, iron shields, and get himself his, his uh, infantry line upgrades. And then he can start trimming that economy down while replacing. Obviously, he has to trim the economy down around about 50 to 60 villagers at this point and replace that with 20 to 30 uh, ox caravans. Uh, but that's that's going to be the next move here. Spamped, on the other hand, he's he's got a hold here. He's got a while away from catching up. He will be getting himself the champion chariots here. Sundry Mudbrick also, but he hasn't even got himself bronze upgrades. So he's got a lot of a lot and a lot of upgrades to kind of get to catch up. So Marty has got himself a big big timing here of an advantage to push through. The question is, what is it really going to be? Uh, can he make anything really happen with it? As we do see the units now pushing up to the top side of the map, this hill fort up here is going to be really, really important to hold. But with all the units at the bottom side of the map, maybe pushing in and grabbing this gold mine might be the better option here. As we do see a watchtower attempting to get up, Marty is going to be putting a stop to that with his Jarls taking that tower down. The villagers will get taken down. The fire giant pushing in here, a little bit out of position, allowing those priests to get some good damage done. Generally speaking, the fire giant shouldn't get killed by anything other than a mummy when you're playing against Ra because, or a son of a size, obviously, because the priests just don't do that much damage. They die really, really fast, and you can keep your fire giant at, out of range of them very, very simply. But uh, Marty misclicks there, and, he, and he's finding some problems. It's now the chariot archers going to be trying to take down the hill fort. One of the little known characteristics of the hill fort is that it only has 18 range, so it can't actually defend itself against the champion chariots, as we do see... Um, 
the chariots here with the f burning pitch upgrade are actually doing uh, a decent amount of damage to the hill fort <laughs> after all is said and done. But this is a problem here for Marty because he needs to defend this. He needs to take these chariot archers out and he needs to secure this gold mine or this gold mine. Otherwise, he's going to be in for a very difficult time here as we do see the market now coming up for Marty. He's realizing he needs the trade route here. Uh, but his resources are incredibly big here. I guess another way you can do this, which might sound a bit crazy, but it, 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 it does make sense, is you can actually go for a Titan Gate here and then convert yourself 20 villagers into old sarks to build the titan up while still giving yourself a decent force of units uh to actually be playing with as we do see the units now moving forward here the uh nidhogg coming over here to deal with these chariots is exactly what he needs to do but look the chariots are taking this out so fast because these chariot archers they've actually got themselves decent upgrades here so the 30 hack damage which uh the nidhogg is doing with the splash damage doesn't end up actually being 30 hack damage at all uh, and this is actually a really good point here from uh, Spam. I'm actually learning from here. Chariot Archers to take out a Nidhogg. While he doesn't actually manage to kill off the Nidhogg completely, had he gone into spread formation here, probably would have been able to kill that Nidhogg with Bronze Male Champion Chariots as opposed to needing to spend uh, pre or send priests over here or something like that. It's now a Mountain Giant starting to push in. Don't know if he got that for, uh, for free or not, but we do see Rampage coming through now for Marty. Is he still sitting at 97 villages? Is he building villages still? No, he's not building villages still. Very good as the uh, trade coming through. But this is definitely the point where uh, playing Norse in the late game is hard. Knowing what to do is equally hard. We'll see if Marty actually realizes what the next stage here is or if he's just going to start floating thousands and thousands of resources here and not going to be able to do anything, allowing Spamp to catch up on the... Uh, catch up on on the on, on the technology and therefore be able to catch back up in this game you do have to realize there's 12 camel caravans at this point only for spam as these walls coming up over here as well and marty he's not he's not going for this old sark thing just yet has he got fully upgraded units yes he does he needs to just get himself medium heavy and champion infantry and then he's actually got the upgrades for it so he can already kind of just start converting old sarks and unfortunately, I think that he's not going to be doing it because he's not realizing that it's uh, it's a part of the Norse game plan as he does get himself the coinage here. 12, and he's actually pushing his economic units up even further. Like, what is this? 105? 105 economic units here, leaving only 55 population to make army, which is a really, really big deal. As the son of Osiris is now over here defending himself with the uh, with with everything else, shifting sands coming in onto this position as the tower is trying to get up over here. I do think that the other option here would be to just for Marty to just delete these units and then just push everything up to the top side here, control this corner, make things difficult for Spamped. But he's not going for that. We are seeing a baluster now finally starting to come out here. As Marty's economy is out of control at this point. Walls coming up. These are the safeguard walls as well. So they're very, very strong. Uh, but they will get taken down relatively quick nonetheless here. This unit's pushing through into this corner, into this middle of the map here. Marty not really doing all too much here with his units. He does convert some Ulfsark here. So he is starting to make it happen. But he hasn't got himself those upgrades for the Ulfsark. For some reason, he's just neglecting those line upgrades. Infantry are a really, really good unit to have here in the late game for Norse, especially like Huskal, Champion Huskal, there's the infantry uh, upgrades starting to come in as watchtowers coming through and those uh, villages he needs to keep on converting them. Really doesn't need to have that much economy here any longer. As, well, as watchtowers up on this position over here, medium infantry comes through. I imagine heavy infantry and champion infantry will be on its way very, very soon. Potentially even Titan Gate here wouldn't go astray here for Marty as the villagers pushing through here, causing some problems. Just convert the Ulfsark. There we go. He's converting those Ulfsark to be able to take out these villagers, but the hill forts are going down as Marty pulls back. He's going to be pulling up the hill fort over here as well. Heavy infantry is on the way, but is it too little, too late? The unit's still pushing through here. No siege on this position. No walls up either to kind of allow the Ballaster to push through on, on this one here as Marty trying to push through here as well with his medium infantry. 
the Son of Osiris is still going to be doing tons of damage. Meanwhile, the Ballast are going to roll through here. They can start getting some damage done onto the Son of Osiris from afar here. If we see him going for that, looks like he's going to be trying to take out the Catapult. But with, with that happening, the Chariot Archers can just push through and take those out relatively fast here. Call of Valhalla going to be coming through. He can get himself Call of Valhalla and Swine Array, as well as the Champion Infantry. It's going to be completely fine here. Uh, he's dropped down to 63 villages, which is still probably a little bit too much as he needs to get up to 20 uh, ox caravans. I want to see 40 villages here in the end. Uh, roughly, maybe 40, 50 villages. But while this is going on, the Mountain Giants moving in onto this position going to be trying to take down this town. So the spam doesn't have any population to defend this one. And though he does have himself fortified town centers, architects, and uh, a sun-dried mud brick it's still going to be going down relatively fast one mountain giant might fall here in the end but the town center with two more uh, of these mountain giants to take it down looks like it will be falling here as the army does manage to also take down the son of Osiris there as well is absolutely huge for Marty. Town Center getting closer and closer to falling here and it will be going down. Village is going to be repairing it a little bit late there. Town Center falls. Marty in an incredibly good position now. He needs to send everything in to this Town Center now and just ignore this top location for a little bit and try and secure this position here. He's going to be losing the Mountain Giant relatively fast now that the priest is uh, the priests are out. The village is coming in to put this one back up. Champion infantry coming through for Marty as well. He is building a couple more of those ox caravans there as well. Could start thinking about a fire giant here. One mummy going to be coming out. We'll put a stop to the mountain giant pushing through here as well. Uh, and it looks like the town center after all is said and done uh, will come back up. But this does allow Marty also uh, as, a, as a consolation prize to get back in to this top position over here. Re rebuild. I'd love to see Longhouse is getting spammed out. Olsark here are a great unit for the late game. Even if you're not through tier, Olsark are really, really good because you can just slide in to these positions and just drop long houses, drop towers. Just going straight through uh, Jarls and staying in with cavalry doesn't make a whole lot of sense with watchtowers coming through. There is no crenellations there. There is no crenellations just yet. There is no guard towers just yet. But, but once that upgrade comes in, these cavalry, these Jarls stop being useful at all. Do see another mountain giant in here, but this mummy is going to be able to take that one out immediately here as Marty not paying attention. He needs to get the Yarls to take that one out, and there he goes, starting to target it down. Spamped it will be retreating away as uh, so the unit's going to be able to take that one down. Another mountain giant coming into that position. More units coming through here. The camel caravans right now are sitting idly by as Spamped has got zero resources in the bank for uh, the gold, zero gold income for the moment here, and so those camel caravans have to start moving over to the town center and picking up their gold, it's a decent amount of gold for them at 74 gold, Wall's still trying to come up here for Marty to, to cut this one off, he has to deal with those watchtowers here as well, trying to mine this gold mine out as well, still needs a handful more uh, ox caravans here as they are slowly starting to get up to a number that is useful, meanwhile Marty returning back up the 72 village here. How many farms does he have at this point? He's got a decent amount of farms, so he shouldn't really be worrying too much about the food income. He really doesn't need wood here is the big thing. This is this is one, one of the mistakes that I think is important. Because you're not building wood units here, and while Marty only has himself a handful of villages on wood, you kind of can just do this thing where you take the villages off of wood, and when you need wood, you put villages back on there rather than having... Uh, any villages on wood at all. You can kind of just go 40 villages on food if you need it, and then 20 villages on uh, on the on the ox caravans. And while you will be wanting to spam longhouses, you can just kind of get yourself a little bit of wood, then put the villages back over onto food. And you're going to be fine here. As these villages moving forward or back here, looking like they're moving back to build more farms as Marty thinks he needs more food income here, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but now villagers moving over onto this location. They're trying to get themselves this gold. And Spam is doing a really, really good job of, of kind of defending both sides here at once. Whereas Marty, he's not able to kind of split his population up. And the answer to not being able to split your population up is actually just to build towers. Towers are free population to hold this these positions. The villagers will get pushed off of the gold there. Retreating back here. Need some more buildings up. We still don't see crenellations through for Spam. Big, big mistake where that's concerned. As another hill fort going to be coming up just with the one, uh, the one Hursa here. Is the Huskar going to be able to come through here and snipe these 
Chariot Archers down really, really fast. There should be a temple up on this side as well for, for Fire Giant to come through here because sending... A, if, if you have one mummy over here, there's not a mummy up the, this top side, so you can get some value out of a Fire Giant at the top here. You see some barracks coming up, Watchtower coming through as well. There's also a very easy... Uh, kind of path through this wall here for a portable ram or something to start pushing through and taking these locations out if marty wants to try and do that but yeah at this point this is this is definitely the problem with uh the problem with a norse late game it's it's just you got to realize what your economy economic numbers need to be and marty at this point he's just got too much economy whereas spammed here you can go up to this level of economy, and you need to go up to this level of economy, and you can just spam mercenary out and defend, which is fine, and it, 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 and it balances itself out. It's how it's supposed to be, but you can just see that the resources of Marty just skyrocketing, and he can't spend them. You just don't need them. That's kind of the point that we're trying to make here. As the, uh, as the guard tower is coming up now for spammed, and we'll see how things are going to uh, eventuate here as Marty trying to throw up a hill fort here walls coming down for spammed on this position as well how have the armory upgrades actually ended up coming through for spammed he's still only sitting at copper bronze and this I mean this is this is the thing like people complain about Egyptian a lot but when it comes down to it, Egyptian's economy is really weak. And if you continue to put pressure onto the Egyptian player, they just cannot afford to build an army and get themselves out economy, uh, get themselves armory upgrades. Because they just don't float resources like every other civilization, especially like Norse here, with Marty sending fully upgraded units here. He just needs to get units out and he'll be able to be fine here. As he's throwing more buildings up on this side. 69 villages, 3,000 food in the bank. He could get a Titan out if he wants. He could get a Wonder out if he wants. Uh, he could basically do anything anything that he, he really wants to do here. He could do it. He's got himself 24 uh, Ox Caravans here, which is plenty. We'll see if Marty is going to be able to work it out uh, in this situation. Spammed with 53 Camel Caravans here. Uh, you could definitely do with empowering the market, especially with Ra having priests. You can just send a priest up there. Obviously, Pharaoh is a bit better with the 25% empower, empower rate. Um, we do see that Spamped is also has to check his priests out just a little bit. One of the big, big advantages of, uh, of Ra is that the priest can empower with a 15% empower rate advantage there. If you put it onto a, onto a location with... 15 villages putting their resources into it it pays for itself in terms of population efficiency but yeah if you're if you're not using it if you're using it on a lumber camp it's a bit a bit sad as the mercenary are going to start coming through mercenary obviously don't cost population but they can't move that far as we do see now portable rams coming through marty needs to get himself his upgrades on those rams siege engineers is not through for uh for marty here as he's trying to push through yet again. 56 villages here left for Marty as he's trying to push them down. He is still sitting at about 80 villages or exactly 80 villages here. Which is still too many for Norse. You can see him floating all the resources. Some towers coming up here. Seeks of the Titans coming through now for Marty. And this is interesting because Spamped here, he's not actually going to be able to afford to get a Titan out. If Marty can... He's already banked the resources, right? So if Marty can drop his population down even further, just get a whole bunch of these villages onto a Titan gate and get the Titan out without losing it, which may not be possible with the rock potential incoming. So he's got to be careful about that. Putting the uh, putting the Titan gate back here, making sure that he's got his upgrades. Does he have himself? Maybe get yourself signal fires. You can see the rock coming through. Maybe get some throwing axemen out to make sure that you can take the, throw, the the rock down easily. We'll see how it's going to go. If uh, if Marty can actually get a Titan out against Egyptian is a very very difficult thing to do. So we do see the uh, 
the ballast now getting set up on this position to break through these walls here and break in to this location. And now with the, the trade route getting empowered here from Spamped, he's going to be seeing a lot more gold income and he's going to be able to spam much, much faster those mercenaries or much easier those mercenaries. Get his economic, uh, his armory upgrades through very, very easily now. So he's finally going to be able to catch up to some degree. And we'll see what Marty's plan is over here. Is he going to just convert a whole bunch of these villages into Ulfsark? Is that the plan? As he hits the myth, the Titan Age. Titan Gate goes down. And the villages do get converted. How many has he gone for? 16 Ulfsark. So while he cuts himself down 16 population in terms of economy, he has also devoted an extra 16 population to that Titan Gate. If that makes any sense. So it's not devoting 32 population to the Titan Gate. It's devoting 16 population to the Titan Gate. So he's still... He's, so all of the pushing that's going to happen here is, is also going to be really, really difficult here. Still. But we'll see how it's going to go. But at least we're now seeing uh, Marty realizes he, he doesn't need... Oh, he's building villages as well. Oh, no. He doesn't need the villages. Stop building villages. Uh, what can you do? What can you do? As the wall's getting broken down over here, Watchtower's coming up. The Titan Gate is coming up very, very fast here. Spamped is now getting himself the favor to get his own Titan Gate out. He can buy himself food here if he so chooses. How much does it cost? It's, it's a lot of uh, resources for the food. And the Secrets of the Titans will be able to come through for Spamped. And I'm not sure that Marty is going to be able to get all too much value out of his Titan Gate now because uh, it, Titan for Titan, that's... That's kind of value for the Egyptian player in a way. There's the unit still trying to push to see Bowsaw coming through for Spamped here. Very, very late Bowsaw. The standard 37-minute Bowsaw upgrade. But while this is all going on, Marty is making progress into this corner, which is definitely the right way to go about it. He will be able to get through into this corner, take these markets down, and Spamped will have to reposition his market elsewhere. And then slowly but surely, Marty will be able to slowly push through this way with his ballast to push. Uh, meanwhile, he's also secured this top location here as well. Though that being said, M Marty has not considered the possibility of of this middle location here. His wall is broken. There's all of this free real estate here that Marty could just grab and start pushing into this middle of this base here. If he grabs here, it's really, really big. Same too for Spamped. If he can just break through this location, he would have free access to attacking this town center. And the thing is that if Egyptian can break through and take a Norse town center down, it's basically game over. So it's vitally important that Norse secures all the possible routes to uh, attacking a town center. Uh, otherwise, the life gets really, really tough as the Titan now going to be coming up 60% for Marty's Titan here. So he's got a big advantage, but will he be able to get through here onto this Titan gate is the big question. Answer actually is even if you're... Even if your Titan is here and your Titan Gate is going up, it can be basically impossible versus a really good player to get onto the Titan Gate. The path blocking is just too strong. So let's we'll see what uh, what Marty's going to be going for here. As we see, Iron Mail is now coming through as Spamp's economy, starting to allow him to get all of his armory upgrades coming. And looks like Marty just, while, while he is breaking through here on this wall, on this position here, it's going to be very tough for him. To, uh, to kind of continue pushing once Spamp gets up to that full armor that he's going to be getting full Spearman and everything else is going to be coming through here as well. Though that being said, once the Titan Gate is up, 20 population goes into the Titan Gate, the 16 Ulsark get to come back onto the front and help out. It wouldn't be a bad idea to just delete the Ulsark so that you can just train the units back on the front though as well as an option. As the units will, as these three ballasts are just doing so much here. And now we see, look at this. This is what we were talking about. Marty not paying attention here. The spamped siege works are going to be coming through the middle of this location as the Ulfsark come in. They can snipe that uh, that catapult down very, very fast here. There's a, there's a tower going up. Apparently one Ulfsark to take the catapult down. Should be enough here, to be honest. Maybe a couple more might not go astray. If the Titan does come up. And now Marty going to be able to push through. He might be able to catch these... 
Uh, Siege works coming up by sending the Olsak through there. We'll see where the Titan is going to be running at this point. And maybe this will be uh, a bit of a notification in Marty's brain here that he can break through the middle of the map as well because Spamped has done just the same thing here. There's the old Stark moving forward and they do notice the Siege Works coming up on this position. Does he actually notice it though? Yes, he does. He'll be able to take these villages down very, very fast and put a stop to these Siege Works. Meanwhile, the Titan... He's, uh, he's having a rest. He's had a really rough day working at the office. Karen yelled at him for the for the millionth time, and he's just he's just had enough. And he's like, "Let's give me a." Mo he just needs a moment. Let's give me a moment here. Oh, house is getting deleted. Let's just run the Titan around. Come on, my friend. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, now, now uh, delete the longhouse, maybe. <laughs> is he going to be able to push through and take this out? At the very least, uh, this is not a position that uh, spammed is going to simply just. Uh, all right. Uh, at the very least, this is a position that Spamp isn't just going to be able to win from getting a Titan out. We've seen this from time to time and time again. Say, for example, a, a pretty recent recent game that I can remember was Ulysses versus Shadowfax, where Ulysses was playing Zeus, Shadowfax was playing Thor, and Ulysses basically played on the defensive for the entirety of the game, but was able to get a Titan out because he's able to use villages to get the Titan out, right? And and Shadowfax didn't try and get his own Titan out by converting Olsark. And therefore, the Norse of, uh, the Norse of, of Shadowfax couldn't actually deal with the Titan, so he just lost. But in this position here, Spamped and Marty can basically just trade their Titan one-to-one. -one. And that's going to be really important to do, as Marty is now moving his Titan forward here into uh, and away from Spamped's Titan. But it looks like Spamped is going to be greeting him over on this position nonetheless. And effectively, you could both basically just say, we're just going to delete our Titans here, and it's completely fine. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, the market's taken down. Where did he move the trade route to? Uh, just over here. So not... I mean, it's a pretty bad trade route. How much gold is he getting? 45 gold. That seems like too much. 13 gold. He's getting 13 gold a trip here. Going to this town center or the other town center. I guess it's not that bad as the Titan is coming through here, moving around the bottom here, still taking its time. But as this is going on, Marty loses a whole bunch of HP on this Titan from the from the arrow fire and everything else. So there are four fire giants here, which will turn the tables quite a lot. As Marty clicks forward onto the enemy Titan, both players are going to be starting to bash each other down. Marty, move your fire giants in to help out. As he does manage to do that, the uh, the Ra Titan is going to be winning for the time being. But these fire giants, they do a lot of damage to the Titan. So it will be equaled out to some degree here. And both Titans should be dying at roughly the same amount of time here. As uh, there are still more baluster movements in here. The Cheeky Rock flying over these Siege Works make me feel that Spamped is going to be going for some dirtiness here. And this is something that everyone's going to start complaining about as we see the wonder of Spamped will be getting created here. As the uh, the Titan survives with a little bit of HP here, might be able to get a significant amount of damage done onto this town center. And this might give Marty the, uh, the help he needs here as he wins that Titan fight just by a sliver. His Titan will be going down, but he will be able to break through this location. It is time for Marty to just cut his economy down to like 20 here and send everything because he's got so much food in the bank. He needs no villagers on, on food for a little bit. You can convert all the villagers on farms to Olsark and just start auto-queuing villagers again back onto the farms if you so choose as well as another option as Norse in the late game. As he's pushed through here, he needs to get more walls up to continue breaking through. We are starting to see some catapult coming out as the Wanderer is coming through. The buildings will get broken down. The town center will eventually be able to go up here for Marty, giving him a 4-2 to two town center advantage here. For the first time in the game, it looks like Marty has been able to make something happen here with uh, Spamped. Uh, Spamped on the other hand here. Let's ask the question. Do you think it is a good idea for Ra to have 82 Camel Caravans. I'm going to pose that question for you here. Do you think it's a good idea? 
Answer? Probably not. Probably not a great idea. As the villagers trying to make their way into this position here. Is he still building them as well? And, 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 look, and this might be also one of the problems with having this many camel caravans. I don't know. Could be. Maybe not. Now we see Marty able to start getting himself the town center up. He's utilizing the mountain giants, fire giants, crush damage as well, helping out quite a bit to break down this position. The uh, the rock, where's that rock gone? That sneaky rock over here, still sitting on, on this position, ready to start the, uh, the catapult raiding, uh, or rock raiding as it is affectionately known. And everything breaking down over here as the fire giant's going to be moving through. There is really no rush to take this wonder down. Having the position here for Marty, all he needs to do is just push through here and he will be able to take this wonder down. He's got an entire 10 minutes to make it work. And he will have the extra town center of population. So he does not need to rush here. He just needs to slowly but surely push through this location, set up hill forts here, get baluster and, he, and get towers and he should be fine here. He does not need to panic at this point. And he is, we're starting up a temple here. There is, yeah, you can also go for myth unit pushes here as well. I want to see towers. I want to see hill forts as well. I want to see baluster to push through on this location. As the, as the wonder is up, Migdal Stronghold's going to be up. This is a 14,000 HP wonder for Spamped. It's an hour, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's 10 minutes away. So 55 minutes here for... Uh, for Spamp to be waiting for the 55 minute mark as the units are just going to be moving through. They're already attacking the Wonder at this point as Ballister Tower is trying to get thrown up. He's got to send these uh, these gulls through to try and snipe down the Priest and the Pharaoh. Meanwhile, Mercenary Cavalry are going to be getting spammed out here as well for Spamp. He's basically just pure Mercenary at this point. It's all he can get. But the thing is, without the Town Center and being empowered here as well, these Mercenary actually train quite slow, so he can't even get them out that fast here. As the unit's pushing through to try and take down the... Or he should try and take down the mummy at the back there. Otherwise, his myth units are going to get cleaned up. Slowly but surely, the, the wonder is getting taken out as the villagers are going to try and rebuild this wall over here. Uh, I do think that Marty has misplayed this ever so slightly, not building towers in to get through. We'll see if he's going to be able to continue to push through and actually take this wonder down. It's a slow process. But with the mountain giants in here, it will, it will be going down. Meanwhile, the, uh, the the mummy on this back here, doing what it can to take out these bound giants very, very slowly. You see crenellations? Yeah, we have crenellations in finally as well. The ballast is sitting on this position over here, taking their time to, to take down these buildings. It's really, really slow here. As the, uh, as the wonder is getting cleaned up, is there any other... Anything else that Spamped is doing here in this position? He gets a whole bunch of uh, Axemen over here. He has the Catapult here to move in to take something else out. As the Wonder here staying alive. 5,000 HP, more units moving through onto this position. As, as Marty, he's not setting up on this position. He, there's Mercenary here. I mean, yeah, they are Mercenary. And this is the only unit right now that Spamped can make. So it makes some sense here that, that he should be able to make them, right? I mean, this is how it works. But the answer here is just simply... I mean, if you don't want to just fight them one-on-one -on -one in, a, uh, in, a, in a spam fest, you can just build towers. Just build towers here. You have Safeguard as well. They're cheaper towers. As three more Mountain Giants end up getting in onto this position. And the problem really here is there are two mummies. And the Wonder is going to stay alive for another day here. As Marty is... I don't understand. I'm scratching my head. Build buildings. Build buildings here. Just get the buildings up. That's all I want. So the Wonder is getting closer and closer to falling. The mummies will be able to come around here. The fire giant coming in. Use the Gehursa to take these mummies down. Thank you for the five months solo 952. Appreciate you, my friend. As the mummy will be able to snipe down the other fire giant as well. More units coming through here. The Axemen are in here as well. For, uh, for spent. Look at the village account. 12 villages for Spamped, and they are all on the Wonder here. They are all on the Wonder. <laughs> I 
And now we see a, a little bit of a cheekiness over here from Spammed. He does send one catapult in, take the town center down. But luckily for Marty, he does notice it as the villager over here trying to get this, trying to get this wall back up. He takes this villager down. That's going to be hurting, uh, almost doing a hundred percent damage to the uh, the villager numbers here. Not no. How does that work? Ten percent damage to the villager numbers? I don't know. Anyways. Wonder getting repaired back up as Marty is really struggling. There's this there's this thing that Chrono JJ espouses when it comes down to uh, when it comes down to wonders and their effect on a player's mental in Age of Mythology. And what he says is, whenever a wonder is built, everyone's and Age of Mythology's real rating drops by about two hundred points. That's what he says. 200 points. If a wonder gets dropped, Age of Mythology's players drops by 200 points. And I believe we're seeing that right here. And it's not just for the wonder user. Both players' real rating here drops by 200 points. <laughs> that's what happens when a uh, that's what happens when a uh, when a wonder gets dropped. But we are seeing now Marty is finally cutting some more villagers here. Is he building villagers again? No, he's actually just cut the villagers. Wonderful. He's down to 37, 24. This is, all, this is basically the number that I said he should be around about at. Around about 60 villagers. But at this point, you can drop down even more. And you can do this consistent uh, trade between having villagers gathering food and then Ulfsarks being built. Villagers gathering food, Ulfsarks being trained. And you keep on doing this, this, this dance between having income and having full population army. As these, these units are just running into the meat grinder. You get some mountain giant though. And we see yet again another another cheeky uh, catapult trying to take this town center down. And Spamped Wonder here. Still alive. 3,500 HP. Five minutes remaining. There's more units rolling in here. And it does look like it is slowly going down. These villagers repairing it. They're not doing that good of a... They're not really helping. Well, they are helping, but it's not like ma making it harder for the wonder to go down in terms of... I don't know what I'm trying to say. The, the villagers aren't out repairing the damage here. So the, the wonder would eventually go down uh, if these units keep moving into this position here. Marty! Build some towers. It would help. And these, the other thing is, remember that this is Heimdall. So these Hursa are only at 4.62 speed as opposed to 5.7 or whatever it is. 5.62 speed. Uh, so the mummies just, they can't get caught up to. And they're actually quite fast here. Look at them moving. 4.0 speed. You can also get the upgrade for them if, if you wanted to. Sitting at 42 favor at the moment. It looks like the units here are cleaning up everything of Spamped quite nicely here yet again. As now the army can now return back to uh, sieging down the uh, the wonder as the mountain giant doesn't even get the special ability off. But one, uh, one mummy does get taken down there. Three minutes left. Oh god, is this this will be if this wonder wins this game. Oh! Oh! It's a baluster! He's worked it out. Walls? Baluster? Oh uh, yes, Marty. Yes, it took him seven minutes. But he's worked it out. Well, he's not committed to the idea just yet, but he has started the walls. Uh, if he can get the walls up and he gets the baluster in here, he'll be able to take the wonder down. He's worked it out. Yes. Yes, walls up on this position. Walls up over here. Baluster in. I mean, he has to also has to get the walls up. Um, maybe he's not committed so much to the idea but uh no nope. never mind he's, he's not he's not committed to the idea 
the, the, the Ballister are doing a significant amount of damage, though. But as the, uh, the Mercenary come in, the Ballister will get taken out. Oh, the villagers are out of food! No more repair rate! Oh, he buys some food. No worries. Back to, uh, back to that. The Ballister does go down yet again. Uh, more, more Ballister coming in. Uh, and the, uh... Oh, the Rams taking the tower. Uh, yep, the, the Wonder is getting closer and closer to falling. Stone walls coming up. One more wall. One more wall. I mean, I guess the barracks can get deleted as well, but... 2,000 HP remaining. It's getting close. <laughs> the ba portable Rams here on the Wonder. <laughs> He's going to take it down, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He's going to take it down. The villagers cannot repair this one in time and spammed. Spamp's Wonder has been raised to the ground. And Marty lives another day. But while this is going on, the town center has been taken down by a catapult. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. What can you do? What can you do as Marty's still going to be breaking through here? As the catapult, they're going to be able to run back and forth around this uh, position here. Is the portable ram going to be able to take down the stone gate? Catapult's getting cleaned up over here. Town center getting rebuilt. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It's not over. It still continues. Spam's got no resources with 85 camel caravans here. He's also He also could move back and put the market back up the top corner if he wanted to. To get a significant trade, a significant economic boost. Break the gate down. Kill the gate. God. Okay, Spam has to figure out if he wants to continue in this game. If he wants to continue in this game, he's going to have to start doing something a little bit different. Because he can't just defend now. He knows that the Wonder, he's lost his Wonder. He's lost his chance to win with the Wonder. You're not allowed to build two Wonders in one game. That's the rule. Uh, it's not a rule. You can actually build two Wonders in one game, but that's the rule. I mean, it is a consistent rate of 13 gold a second. Or maybe a little bit more than 13 gold a second. Thank you for the 44 months, Hannibal Barker! Wonder wins equal cheating. I, I, well, I mean, cheating is one way to describe it. Whether that's accurate or not remains to be seen. That's another catapult coming back in here. Going to be able to put a stop to the town center building shenanigans here of Marty. Can he kill it? Bang. Yes, he does. Yeah, Wonder in the other corner. Put the Wonder over here now. If he did actually put the Wonder in this spot here, I think he would have won. I think if he built the Wonder here... I'm not sure that Marty would have been able to get through as easy, easily. I mean, obviously, if he played it right, he would have been able to break through easily, but... Will the town center go up or not, is the big question. Axeman coming in to deny the town center. More units coming in to deny the settlement. Spam setting everything in here. Will Marty win? Coming to you. Netflix exclusive. I've lost my mind. I have lost my mind in this game. I don't I don't know what else. Wait. No, still no market up in the corner. Market going up. This is all over. Spamps worked it out. He can send the, the camel caravans to the other market here. Oh dear. Oh dear. His gold is about to skyrocket. Now, while the units, they are getting killed, he is successful. Marty is successfully killing most of these raw units. He's just not going to be able to get the town center back up. And look at this. Spam's villages are slowly starting to be rebuilt here as well. The walls are up. The towers are up. The market is up on this corner over here as well. And I think that the wonder that went up once here for Spam 
has taken Marty's real rating down by 200. Spamps also has gone down by 200. But now that the wonder is dead, Marty's real rating is stayed down 200, but Spamp is slowly catching back up to his real level. As I say that, Marty starts putting the towers up and we're like, okay, he's back. He's back. Towers are important. There's one fire giant getting taken down. Another one going to be getting taken down. We see the villagers making their move in here now. Can he get in on this position or not is the big question. Lots of gold left in the bank here. The hill fort will be able to take these villagers out quite fast though as another fire giant gets sniped down by the mummies here. Another one popping out as uh, Marty smartly going to be targeting down this mummy here. You do basically want to be trading one fire giant for one mummy as your general rule of thumb you let the mummy kill one of your fire giants you kill the the mummy with the, with the rest of your fire giants that are alive there so village is going to be throwing up a siege works over here more siege works coming up so let's remember that there is this wide gaping hole here and a space here that marty can't see that spamp could have dropped a siege works here could have started a side build to take a town center down and cause a lot of grief for Marty in this game. My eyes are bleeding. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, the catapult is back. Still no wall over here to defend this. We do see that the... I mean, you'd have to build the wall directly in front of the opponent's wall, but you could do that. He could have also broken the gate down and walled on the other side. For Townsend, it gets denied yet again. Oh, portable ram coming in. Going to get denied, though. And the, tra the trade is still trading to this spot. It's not coming over here. Still only uh, the, seven the 13 gold. The town center is getting closer and closer to being finished here with the watchtowers. Look at these, these bad boys. 10.4 damage per second plus the two arrows. Plus 150% bonus damage against cavalry. We'll be able to take them down much, much faster here. Now we see the, the hearse are able to start moving in and taking down those mummies there. that are causing a lot of problems here. The town center is still getting to nothing. <laughs> you just can't get it. You can't get it. 15 more camels to unlock the golden camel. Hey, nobody, don't tell, don't tell anyone about that Easter egg. The secrets, the secrets of age of mythology. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not a thing. It might be a thing. I don't know. I've never built a hundred camel caravans before. Really, at this point, the question is, is someone just going to give up? Because that could happen. Like, Spamped could just give up here and just say, screw it. I don't want to play anymore. Catapult is back in. Denies the town center yet again. Still no effort to stop the catapults from rolling through. I wonder, how many times does something have to happen before someone realizes that they have to do something to stop that from happening? We have Ez in the chat saying Red has no economy. He's got 85 cable caravans. Of course he's got economy. <laughs> oh, oh, it's going up. The town center is going up. Is there another ca catapult rolling in? Success. Marty gets the town center up. Yes. Now what? This, is the game over? <laughs> Marty's going to be able to spend his resources now, that's for sure. He does have a lot of favor in the bank. He can spam out a bunch of uh, mountain giants to like ro um, roll through here and take out this position here as well.
Is there anything happening up here? Still portable rams trying to break through. Just, just causing some light pressure. Same good day. He could also do a temple up the top side and spam mountain giants through the top side, which would be a lot more effective than the portable rams because the mummies have to be at the bottom side to defend this. And then once the mummies move up to the top side to deal with the mountain giants, then you can do the same thing on the bottom side. Just keep on moving the location where you put your myth units. It's a really good way to, to outplay the, uh, the mummy shenanigans. There we go. Mountain Giants queued up for Marty. There is still an opportunity here for Spant to push through and take this town center down. Just saying, like, oh, now there's the walls going up. Marty's realized it. <laughs> Takes one hour and two minutes to realize you've got a, a hole in your wall. And some things are difficult to know. Some things are difficult to work out, you know? Now, is this true? I mean, Loggy's in the chat. He knows everything about this game. Is it true that if you empower your town center, your mercenary cavalry and mercenary train faster? Is that true or is that is that not true? He doesn't actually know. It is true. Proper gentleman. Right. There you go. So you should be empowering your town center. Right, that'll get yourself... Uh, 25% more mercenary cavalry. Because you only have the one building. Well, you could build them out of here as well. Make uh, mercenary cavalry out of that town center. Make mercenary infantry out of this town center is another option. But this is a slow death now for Spamped. He's going to continue to try and get himself set up over here. And Marty refuses to claim any of this position with uh, with military bag. Swine array! He still hasn't gotten swine array! So... Swine Array is a bonus versus cavalry. Champion of Suck only have a... Well, they don't actually have any bonus versus cavalry. I thought they might have had like a 10% bonus versus cavalry or something, but maybe not. But with Swine Array, you get, you get a significant bonus versus mercenary cavalry, which then allows your old Suck to effectively both counter the mercenary cavalry and also the mercenary, and the mercenary fairly decently as well. So you can basically just go full old Suck against... Merc, 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 mercenary, and it works really well when you have Bragi. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. The dreaded. It's flying in. Oh no. Oh dear. Is this over for Marty right now? Will he be able to defend the doom, the doomsday that's coming for him in the rock raid? Does he notice it? The town center that he spent so long rebuilding is now going to be going down. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh, he sees with a, with a couple legendary Yarls here. The counter for, uh, for rock raiding as Norse is fire giants. Fire giants do counter the, the, uh, the rock very, very easily. Uh, so especially when you have hell as we do see. Does it go down? It stays alive! The hero! The hero of uh, of this game has managed to stay alive against the mighty rock raid. Wait, where'd the rock go? It's flying back over to pick up some more catapult. The, the, cat, the catapult are here. There's one over here as well. So I'm going to be catapult raiding himself back into the game. Another option that we oh no he's he's opened up all of the all of the uh, the the resources here. Another option that you could try is uh, mow down this wood here for a little bit and then drop a wonder in this little palm tree area. Though you can range it down with the baluster, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, the rocks are back for catapult. He's going to be moving around. Will Marty know that he needs to build a fire giant here or not? Is the big question. The best way to do it is you just build a temple around every single one of your town centers, and then you'd be ready to uh, get yourself the fire giant out wherever the rock goes. As the building's getting torn down, take the town center out. As the rock comes back in. Town center is significantly damaged here. The baluster are here though. Right click the rock. Right click it. Right click it. Kill the rock. 
I suppose that honestly, four catapult not being able to one hit a Norse tower, that safeguard. There you go, safeguard overpowered. There's a rock flying away. There's a lot of population in this rock. Catapults are four pop, I believe, plus the rock. There's three pop. With three of these, you get 12, 15 population in that rock there. Significant amount of, uh, of resources or population. I guess population is a resource devoted to the rock raids. It's now, well, it's coming. It's coming. Do, 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 do. Is this the hero rock or is this the devil rock? You let me know. And we haven't noticed it. Marty's town center going down. He's got a couple of villages here. He could convert into Ulfsark. And he is going to do just that to come over here and try and deal with these catapults. The the, uh, the rock will be ready to pick up. Spam pays attention. The hometown center hasn't actually lost any HP yet. As well as going up over here. And the rock is flying around. The town center will get some good damage done. That's the Ulfsark coming through. Will the rock find a place to drop? He does. He's going back after the town center. These three Ulfsark have not chased this around at all. Town center going down even faster now. Well, the same speed as before. Do 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 And then it's... Uh, oh, oh, my brain... At least the ballast are now getting in. The walls are up. There are catapults coming out, though, to take those walls down. So you have to be a little bit careful here. At least the wall does get taken down on that position. Mound Giant coming in. Smarty is not... Never say die. Oh, oh, the, the, the fortified town center is almost down here. Ulfsark is staying nice and well underneath it. It would be nice if you could just right-click the rock and you chase the rock around. That would be a nice addition. So we see a hill fort getting dropped. Probably a tower wouldn't go astray, but a hill fort nonetheless. The Spamp's wall has been taken down, but the town center is getting closer and closer to falling here. And the rock is flying around doing nothing. Oh, now it's moving. Where are you going? Back over to this town center, maybe? Maybe you can kill this one. The town center does fall, and now Spamped is down to one town center, and that is the cue for him to tap out of this game. One hour, nine minutes, basically. <sighs> Thanks for staying with me, guys. I know you all have seen the numbers here. Look at this economy here. Economy here, nearly 1,000 or 10,000 food. No, 100,000 food. <laughs> Nearly 100,000 food gathered. 100,000 gold gathered from trade from Spamped. Both players above 100,000 gold here. Military units, 1,000 military count. Both above 1,000 units lost here. Not, both hitting 49 military uh, uh, research count. All resource total at 252,000. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch if you're on the YouTube. Hit the, uh, the, uh, the subscribe. I'll see you in the next game. Bye!